Good day, students. How are you today? And welcome to this new day. Let's go straight to what we have. Today we are going to look at theory of consumer behavior. Lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to, one, explain the concept of utility, total, average, and marginal utility. Two, discuss the principle of utility maximization and diminishing marginal utility. Three, explain why the curve is downward sloping. Theory of consumer behavior, what is it all about? This theory of consumer behavior deals with the way a consumer distributes his given income among competing commodities in order to maximize his satisfaction. That's what theory of consumer behavior is talking about. What are the basic concepts here? One is utility. What is utility? The ability of a commodity to give satisfaction to a consumer is called utility. Or the satisfaction derived from consuming a particular commodity. That's what we call utility. Utility does not mean something is good or bad. But once it gives you satisfaction, it gives you utility. We have total utility, the totality. It refers to the total amount of satisfaction derived from the amount of that commodity consumed. Example, the total utility of a commodity X depends on the quantity of the commodity consumed. This can be expressed as a utility function. TUX is a function of Q. Y TU is total utility of product X. How do you compute it? Total utility is a function of quantity consumed. So total utility is calculated as average utility multiplied by quantity consumed. The next is average utility. It is the total utility divided by the amount of the goods consumed. This can be expressed as AU, average utility is equal to total utility of commodity X, divided by the quantity consumed of commodity X. That is the average utility. Marginal utility, the additional satisfaction derived or extra satisfaction derived from consuming more or less of a commodity. So marginal utility, on the other hand, refers to the change in satisfaction resulting from consuming a little more or a little less of that commodity. This is the change in total utility resulting from a unit change in the consumption of a commodity. Marginal utility, MU, is calculated as change in total utility divided by change in consumption. Having defined those concepts, let's now look at types of utility. We have three types of utility. We have time utility, we have form utility, we have place utility. Remember we said that utility is the satisfaction one derives from consuming a particular commodity. Or can alternatively define as the, the ability of a commodity to give satisfaction. So types of utility, the first one is time utility. What is time utility? It involves storing or preserving of goods in order to give satisfaction later. During harvesting period, some goods are very surplus in supply. They are and cheap. That time, someone can buy them and keep them until such a time it becomes scarce. Once it's, it's scarce, bring them out and sell it and make your profit. So that's what we call time utility. The farmer sells them when they are scarce, thereby satisfying human wants. So you store them when they are cheap. But during this period of scarcity, you bring them out and sell and make your profit. Time utility. Form utility. Changing the form or the structure of a commodity through manufacturing. Example, you can buy floor. Floor does not give you utility. Floor ordinarily does not give satisfaction until you transform it into something like any beverage, bread, changing, biscuits, or transforming wood, changing the form of wood to furniture. These are the ones that give you satisfaction. 
you can sit on, on, on furniture. Finally, we have place utility. This involves changing the geographical location of a good through distribution from where it has little utility to where its utility is higher. For instance, agricultural products like rice or yam could be moved from the farm to the market where they will be bought. That is what we call place utility. Changing the geographical location of the commodity from where it is not needed to where it is needed. Agricultural products from the farm to the market. Next is relationship between total utility and marginal utility. The relationship between total utility and marginal utility can be best explained with the help of the table and graph below. On the first column, we have units of apple consumed. We're looking at apples here. Total utility, TU, marginal utility, MU. When nothing was consumed, no total utility, marginal utility, zero. When the first apple was consumed, total utility, 10. Marginal utility, 10. How do we get, get marginal utility? This one, total utility where you are, minus the one above it. So 10 minus 0 will give you 10. When the second unit of apple was consumed, total utility increased from 10 to, 50, to 19. But the marginal utility will be 19 minus this, which is 9. As it continues to increase, increase, one thing is certain, the total utility was increasing, increasing, reached maximum and, and started decreasing. What did you see in marginal utility? Marginal utility started decreasing after the consumption of the first one. 10, 9, 6, you can see, and reached zero. Point of this is one, once the utility is zero, it means you can no longer get any satisfaction from it. You stop there. If you are consuming a particular commodity and it's, it's reached zero point, that means it's, it's at the neck. Any further consumption you throw up becomes negative. The satisfaction becomes negative. And when total, what you must observe from this table is that when total utility is maximum, Marginal utility is zero. As total utility increases, marginal utility decreases. This one continues to decrease until it gets to zero. And once it's zero, marginal total utility is maximum. After the maximum, total utility begins to decrease. And once total utility begins to decrease, marginal utility becomes negative. Meaning that instead of gaining something from what you're consuming, you're throwing up. This we call here, this, this, this place, this utility. So from this table now, you can present this thing in a diagram, which is what you are going to see now. Look at the diagram. On the vertical axis, you have total utility and marginal utility. While on the horizontal axis, you have quantity con units consumed of this apple. So you can see that initially, this one, the total utility was increasing until you get to the point of maximum, while the marginal utility started decreasing from uh, onset. After the first consumption, the other ones, the, the, the satisfaction began to decrease until it got to zero. So one thing is sure, when the total utility is maximum, marginal utility is zero. Now after when the total utility begins to decrease, marginal utility becomes negative. The above diagram can be summarized as follows. One, when total utility curve is increasing, marginal utility curve is decreasing from what we have seen. When total utility is maximized at Q1, marginal utility is usually zero. Where the marginal utility curve touches the X axis. Three, when total utility curve starts decreasing, marginal utility curve begins, becomes negative, like I showed you. I hope we are together. Next thing is utility measurability. Some people said utility cannot be measured. While well, another school of thought says it can be measured using utils. Some said it can be measured using baskets of whatever the person has consumed. Utility measurability. This shows how utility can be measured. 
There are two views based on two schools of thought. One, the cardinal school of thought, believes that we can measure utility by utils, while the ordinal school of thought believes that we can measure it by ranking basket of goods, so that a rational consumer will prefer the basket with greater quantity of goods. The law of diminishing marginal utility, just like we have the law of diminishing marginal return, we have the diminishing law of diminishing marginal utility. What does this law state? He said that the more of a commodity you consume, initially the quantity you satisfaction will be high, and then as you continue to consume the same commodity, the, the satisfaction begins to decrease, gets to a point where it is zero. Thereafter, it becomes negative. In that case, we say you have this utility. So this says that the amount of satisfaction derived from the additional units of a commodity consumed by an individual decreases continuously. That is, adds less to total utility. Continue, decreases continuously, get to zero, and thereafter becomes negative. The law of diminishing marginal utility says that as a consumer consumes more units of a commodity, the satisfaction derived from each additional unit of the commodity diminishes. So that is what we call law of diminishing marginal utility. As a consumer consumes more of a particular commodity, the additional satisfaction he derives decreases continues to decrease until it becomes zero. That means he can no longer absorb it. If the person continues to consume that particular commodity, the person throws up. That's why it becomes, when it becomes negative, and then we say it is this utility. This, it is at the point where marginal utility decreases continuously that is referred to as diminishing marginal utility. It should be noted that when marginal utility becomes negative, there is this, this utility. And when marginal utility is zero, we should stop further our consumption of the goods. So know when to st stop consuming a particular commodity. Having said that, let's want to look at consumer equilibrium, or what we call utility maximization. When is utility maximized? What is consumer equilibrium? Utility maximization is a point where the marginal utility per price of a commodity is equal to the, to the marginal utility per price of other commodities. When you have so many commodities you're consuming, or if you, in case of a, a particular a, one particular commodity, the utility is maximized where marginal utility of that product, marginal utility from the consumption of the part, particular product is equal to the price of it. So let's see what we have written. The equilibrium of a consumer is a situation in which his satisfaction or utility from spending his income on various goods and services is maximized. Consumer equilibrium. Note it because they will be asking you from time to time what is consumer equilibrium. We define consumer equilibrium as a situation in which the satisfaction or utility from spending his income on various goods and services is maximized. Utility maximization is the point where a consumer derives maximum satisfaction. That is, when his marginal utility equates the price of the commodity. A consumer's utility is maximized when the marginal utility per amount spent on a product is equal to the marginal utility per amount spent on any other product. It can be written mathematically as, look at it, we had, there's profit, there's utility maximization. Utility is maximized where the marginal utility per amount spent on a particular product is equal to the marginal utility per amount spent on any other product. That's when utility is maximized when the satisfaction is highest. Where MUX is equal to marginal utility of X, MUY marginal utility of commodity Y, and MUZ is marginal utility of commodity Z. And then PX is price of X, PY price of Y, PZ price of Z. Or in case of one commodity, a consumer will maximize his utility when the marginal utility of that commodity 
equals to the price of the commodity. Example, when marginal utility, utility is maximized for this particular product, commodity X, the utility of it is maximized where the marginal utility of that commodity is equal to the price. If the utility is more than the price, of course, the consumer will continue to buy that commodity. But where the marginal utility begins to decrease, if the consumer feels he's paying more, much more price than, his, than the, the satisfaction he's receiving from it, he will buy less of that commodity. So for a commodity, utility must must be a marginal utility. Where the additional satisfaction he derives from that commodity is equal to the price he pays. We are looking at derivation of individual demand curve from the marginal utility theory. Sometimes you are asked to derive how derive the individual demand curve from the marginal utility theory. How are we going to do it? To derive it, the marginal utility you equate it with the price of the commodity. Anywhere you see marginal utility, equate it with price. So the Marshallian theory of utility can be used to derive the negative slope of the demand curve through the diminishing marginal utility concept, which helps to explain why the normal demand curve slopes downwards from left to right. A rational consumer ideally would only buy a commodity if and only if the marginal utility derived from it is higher or at least equal to the price. Hence, price and marginal utility have negative relationship and can be depicted by a curve or line with negative slope, which is similar to the demand curve. It is important to note that in deriving demand curve from marginal utility curve, we simply want Equate price to marginal utility, that is P is equal to MU. Two, equate quantity demanded to quantity consumed. Example, the table below represents a traveler's consumption of bottles of Coke. Draw the demand curve for the traveler's consumption of Coke. Now, this, look at the table. Number of bottles consumed. Remember, we say that anywhere you see number of Quantity consumed, which is, we can take it as quantity demanded. Total utility, marginal utility. We, we used the first and the second, the last column. Number of quantity consumed is accepted as quantity demanded, while marginal utility is equal to the price. So you can see as price increases, quantity demanded decreases. From this, we can draw the demand curve. We use this one as a price. The marginal utility, this one is a price, which is on the horizontal, on the vertical axis. But quantity consumed, which is, we now take as quantity demanded, is drawn on the horizontal axis. You can see, the price here is drawn on the y-axis. This one is quantity, quantity of bottle consumed. Quantity of bottle consumed. Then this is one along the, the y-axis. One cm is equal to ten. Along the x-axis, one cm is equal to two. So when price is thirty naira, quantity demanded is one. When price is two twenty, quantity demanded is three. When quantity when price is ten, quantity demanded is this. You draw it. You can see you now arrive at the demand curve, which is downward sloping, slope downwards from the left to the right. Any questions, students? So let's continue. Calculation of utility maximization. The following table gives total utilities from the consumption of food and clothes. A hypothetical economy. Total utility. Here we have the quantity consumed of this com commodity. Quantity consumed, this is food, this is clothes. These are total utility. Total utility. This is 100, tooth, and so on. Say, suppose the consumer has 370 naira to spend on two goods. These two goods are food and clothes. He would be able to maximize his utility subject to his budget 
and given that the price per unit of food and clothes are 15 naira and 30 naira respectively we are looking at utility maximization for this consumer what quantity of food and clothes will he consume to derive maximum satisfaction there are things he must consider one is the price of the commodities two he has to consider his budget constraints his budget constraint like he, he had just 317 naira to spend on both clothes and food so let's know the combination he will buy solution the problem requires the computation of marginal utility over price marginal utility per, per price ratios for food to clothes that is marginal utility of food consumed remember we say that utility is maximized for commodities when you have more than one commodity the utility is maximized at that point your marginal utility per, per price of the product is equal to the marginal utility per price of the other product so in this case marginal we're looking at marginal utility of food per price of food must be equal to marginal utility per price of clothes at each level how do we do that we have been given quantity of food consumed this is quantity of food here we have total utility given total utility this to get our marginal utility remember i said marginal utility is total utility where you are minus the total utility above it divided by the difference in quantity consumed so 700 minus 100 will give you 600. Here, 115 divided minus this will give you 450 in that order. And you get to the last one. You have finished with that, that of uh, marginal utility. The marginal utility divided by the price of food. Here we have zero dash dash. When here, what is the price of food? Price of food, we are told that the price of food is 15 naira. So marginal utility is 600 divided by 50, it will give you this. For 450 minus divided by 5, 50 will give you 9 in that order until you get to the last one, 3. What of quantity divided of close? We are giving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Total utility consumed is this. Total, total utility derived from consumption of clothes. This. How do we get the marginal utility? So marginal utility derived from consumption of these clothes are these to get calculate marginal utility is total utility q2 minus q1 tu2 minus tu1 divided by q2 q minus q1 it gives you this and to finish that one then marginal utility of per price marginal utility per price of this clothes is the marginal utility divided by the price so the price is 30. 300 divided by 30 will give you 10. 240 divided by 30 will give you this. This one divided by 30 will give you this. And that other. 60 divided by 30 will give you 2. We are looking at, having gotten this one, where is the profit maximized? We are looking, where did this consumer maximize his utility? Remember we said that his utility is maximized. At that point, where marginal utility per price of food is equal to marginal utility per price of clothes considering his budget constraint which is 370 so from here we can see his marginal utility where is equal to where is marginal utility where is this one equal to this from here we can see this one is six this one is equal to six Meaning that his, he maximizes his utility when the quantity consumed of food is 5 units and quantity consumed of clothes is 4 units. So the total reveals that the first condition of, of this marginal utility per price of food is equal to marginal utility per price of clothes is fulfilled at two different levels of consumption. First, where this one is eight we have four units of food and three units of clothes where this 
formula gives you six. You have five, five units of food and four units of clothes. That is first condition fulfilled. Let's look at the second condition. The necessary condition, two of those conditions must apply. We, the person has to put into consideration his budget constraints. So however, the first condition is necessary but not sufficient for utility maximization. Thus, to identify which of the two combinations of food and clothes will yield maximum satisfaction, we need to test for the second condition for utility maximization, that is budget constraints. The second condition is Y, which is income, is equal to price of X, price of food, multiplied by quantity demand, quantity consumed of food, plus price of clothes, multiplied by quantity consumed of clothes. This is the budget constraint. Now substitute into the formula. We are told that the price of food is 15 naira, quantity consumed of food 5. Price of, of clothes, 13 naira, quantity consumed is 4. If you multiply 50 minus times 5 will give you 250 plus 120, 370. Remember, the man has 370. So utility is maximized given his budget constraint where the consumer consumes 5 units of food plus 4 units of clothes. So first, 5 units of food and 4 units of clothes will yield maximum satisfaction. This is called cardinal utility approach. Lastly, let's look at the importance of law of diminishing marginal utility. All these, um, these things we have been talking about. What, of what importance? Of what use is this law? One, it is important to entrepreneurs and producers because it is basis, the basis for demand. It will help them to know the level of demand since the consumers can only pay more for goods with higher marginal utility. Two, it guides the producers against overproduction. The law of diminishing marginal utility can help the entrepreneur and the producers to know when to change price of their commodities. Number four, it helps in policy formulation by governments and entrepreneurs concerning the welfare of consumers. Five, it explains the first law of demand and supply. It says that more of a commodity will be bought at a lower price. And lastly, this law is also a theory that explains why demand curve slopes downwards from the left to the right, which is the basis of the law. I hope there's no question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now put down these, quest these questions, attempt them when you get home. One, what is utility? Two, when is utility maximized? Three, why is demand curve downward sloping? Attempt the questions. So these are the answers to those questions. Question one says, what is utility? Look at the answer. Utility is the ability of a commodity to satisfy human wants. Two, what is utility maximization? A consumer's utility is maximized when the marginal utility per amount spent on a product is equal to the marginal utility per amount spent on any other product. It can be written mathematically as marginal utility of X per price of X is equal to marginal utility of Y per price of Y is equal to marginal utility of Z per price of Z. Where MUX stands for marginal utility of product X, this one marginal utility of product Y, MUZ marginal utility of product X, then PX, PY, and PZ stands for prices of commodity X, commodity Y, and commodity Z. The last question is why is demand curve downward sloping? The answer is the demand curve is downward sloping because it a rise in price of a commodity will lead to a decrease in the quantity of the commodity demanded by each household. Thank you so much, dear students. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. See you some other time. End of lesson.